Hallelujah. Listen, to be thrilled with change, you got to be thrilled with the Word. The Word is the only thing that brings change. The Word is the only thing that will turn a situation that looked impossible, that looked like it wasn't going in the right direction, symptoms that looked like they were going to derail everything in your life. The Word of God is the only thing that can bring change. The only thing that can bring lasting change. I'm not just looking for a quick fix. I'm looking for lasting, enduring, steadfast change in my life, in my finances. Amen. I want real change. I'm not looking for the cheap stuff. <laughs> Amen. I am so thrilled that the Word of God changed my life. It changed my life. It changed, not only did it change where I'm at right now, but I know this, my future looks completely different because of the Word of God. Your future can be completely different because of His Word. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll go ahead and be seated this morning. Hallelujah. I am so thrilled with the word. This morning, I've got a very specific uh, message that I want to bring that I think it's it'll be good. Amen. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, really the importance of the local church and your part in it. What's your part in the local church, in the body of Christ? Uh, you know, your part, we know this with some good sound teaching. We understand that, excuse me, uh, and some of the Bible school students have been able to be here when um, the church I was raised in, Pastor Edwin Anderson, um, he has such wonderful revelation on the local church and understanding that so many people, and he talks about so many people, uh, they only see the universal church. They only really want to see the universal church because see, when they talk about the church and they're part in the universal church, then what they want to do is they want to dismiss themselves from any responsibility on the local level. You know, that, well, I'm doing my part with, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of the universal church, and they like to see the bigness, the grandness, um, and that all sounds good and wonderful, uh, but when it comes down to it, God and each scripture he goes through and uh, talks about how um, the scriptures really talk about uh, the examples when it says church is talking about the local church. And it's more more often than not referencing the local church, not a, not the universal church. And so I don't want to get into all of that. That's a whole nother teaching. But I want you to understand your part in the local church is the part that God's looking at. Yes, when you got born again, you joined his universal family. That's wonderful. That's right. Uh, there are believers everywhere. But see, believers everywhere are doing their part locally. <laughs> they should be doing their part locally. Amen. Uh, you know, the the toe, you know, you say your little toe doesn't look at the finger, you know, the pinky and go, oh, isn't that great? The pinky's doing its job and the little toe's doing nothing. Why? Well, we're part of the same body. Well, just because you're part of the same body doesn't mean you're functioning. And that's what people do all the time. Oh, I'm a part of the body, but what are you doing? What's your function? Amen. It's getting real quiet. It's getting real quiet. Amen. So just because you're admiring what somebody else is doing, you know, their part, you've got to remember what's my part. Stay focused on your part. So this morning, I want us to help us. I, I want to help us locate what is my part. What is our part? Amen. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's start at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. It says here, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Let's start in verse 15. 
Rather, let our lives lovingly express, I'm going to read out the Amplified, lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, uh, enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things unto him who is ahead, even Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. So we see here it's talking about maturing in Christ getting some maturity. Uh, Don't you know, you can say in your own lives, uh, those of you who have families, those of you who've lived some time, that maturity uh, shows up. You can demonstrate maturity when you understand what your responsibility is. Right? Responsibility. When you begin to see that in your children, that they're responsible, they're on time, they're organized, things are happening, uh, that you don't have to tell them what to do and hold their hand, you go, wait, there's some maturity happening. There's some maturity. There's some development. You know, they're, uh, they're doing things in the home or they're doing things on the job without anybody having to ask them you know, and prod them. If you have to be asked, whether it be teenagers, whether it be at home, uh, folks, whether you have a job and, and your boss has to come and ask you 25 times to get something done, that shows a lack of maturity on the job. Isn't that correct? Right? So the lack of maturity on the job uh, demonstrates, uh, you know, where you're at as far as Uh, how far you can go, you know? And so he's talking about maturing in Christ. So maturity uh, for the body, wouldn't it be the same thing? When we begin to mature, we know our place. We find our place and we don't have to be asked 25 times to get there and to participate and to be in the flow. Does that help? You know, if if I say to my son, uh, Liam, I need you to go every, every, um, every night the kids get a bath and Liam's job is to go get two pairs of underwear and a diaper. He's always the first one done. And now after so long, uh, I'm going to get two pairs of underwear and a diaper. And he tells us I'm going to get two pairs of underwear and a diaper. He knows what his responsibility is to help, uh, ensure that the progression of the evening it goes smoothly you know what I'm saying you're trying to get kids washed pajamas on snacks done and kids to bed there is a progression of where we need to be getting to so that everybody can enjoy their evening right and he knows the quicker he can get those two pairs of underwear and diaper he can go do what he needs to do be it play daddy's video game, get his own snack, whatever it is. So we're going to get bathed. We're going to do whatever we can to help the whole because it's usually the five of us, all five of us in there doing bath time, getting everything, you know, moving. We had dinner. You know, you move from, it's like stations. You move from dinner station to bath station to bed station. You know, you just, we move as a herd, the five of us. And so that's his part in that. And now I don't even have to tell him. And he, that's his part of our household. That's his part in what we're doing and so that we can move to the next thing. And it's no different. In this next verse, you're going to see we're a body. We move together. We're supposed to be moving together. We're supposed to be functioning together. And I would encourage you today uh, that if you've never known it, find your part. Your part is not outside of your local church. Is there things for you to do and people for you to reach? Yes. But there is such a wonderful, uh, great responsibility within the local church that you've been given because this is the body. You know, I don't care. I've had people tell me, well, I work such long hours. I just, I won't be able to serve anymore. They've told Miss Janine, they've said to us, I just won't be able to serve anymore. I work, well, is your job the body of Christ or is the church the body of Christ? Which are you deciding you're going to serve? You know, you have to make that decision. Really being a part of the body of Christ, uh, you can be born into it, but you may not be part of it. There's a lot of people born into his body, but they're not part. They've decided they don't really want a part. They want to hear and they want to have their needs met. Uh, most people want their needs met. Most people want all of their needs met, but they don't want all of God. Does that, does that make sense? The believer, most believers want, I want all my needs met. They want to have every need met, but they don't want all of God. 
and they're not willing to give all to God. They want all from God, but they won't give all to God. And so I want to be one of those that I give all to him. If you give all to him, you'll receive all from him. Amen. And so uh, let's look here at Ephesians chapter 16, for because of whom, so it's just talking about love. It's talking about maturing. For because of him, the whole body, the church and all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together, closely joined, not loosely. What's your connection with your local church? This is the body. What's your connection? Is it close? Is it fitted? Or is it loose? You know, uh, this morning um, I went to put on a dress. And ladies, you know how it's hemmed, you know, up, up underneath. And sometimes that little thread comes undone and then it flaps down. You know what I'm talking about? And you go to put on a dress and you... And you know what? It just it it just kind of ruins like that twenty minutes. You're frustrated. Now you go new. You got to go home, stitch it up. You know why don't they make that a little bit tighter? I always ask myself, why do they make that stitching so loose? You know, and so I put on the dress and it had you know unfolded. So I stood there and you know this this side's tucked up underneath and this side's flapped down. You know you know what I'm saying. Why? Because the stitching had come loose and it didn't look right. It affected the fit. When I walked, it didn't, it didn't lay right. And you could see that something wasn't right. You could see that the dress was now the, the shape that it, sh it was made to be. It had lost its form. And that's what happens when you are fitly when you're tight and you're 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 knitted tightly everything takes the right shape everything has the right form and everything looks good and functions good and flows right but when the connection is loose and it's not fitted and it's not firm stuff doesn't look right it doesn't work right and what happened I took that dress and I hung it back up on the hanger because it was of no use. And so many people don't recognize that what God can do in a local church is dependent on how tightly they are connected or how loose. If they're more loose, if everybody's more casual and uh, hanging on by a thread, he's going to have to hang it up and say, well, maybe another day. Yeah. You know. Maybe I can, maybe I can have, listen, folks, let's put this into perspective. If we're believing and you really want to see what Brother Copeland said, blind eyes open, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. If we want to see miracles, signs and wonders, it's okay if you don't, that's up to you. That's between you and God. But I know this, the flow of my father is the flow of miraculous. And I want to see the flow of the miraculous because that's on his heart. And so I've decided that I'm going to do everything I can. If the miraculous were to start happening today, do we have enough people in place and serving in this local body to handle the hundreds that would begin to run to this place the way Brother Copeland said it would happen? Do we have the people in place? You have to ask yourself, am I firmly and fitted in place so that miracle signs and wonders can happen here? We think that we're waiting on God and he is waiting on us. He's waiting on us. So don't be somebody who wants all their needs met but don't want all of God. You have to pursue all of him to receive all that you need. You know, when I pursue all of God, he'll make sure that all I need is, is taken care of. You know, many people don't want all of him because all of him requires, Ed puts a demand on them. And it requires more from them. All of him is going to mean if I really want all of him, then I'm going to have to lay aside all of me. You know, uh, all of God means less of myself. Uh, many want to call on the church, 
Uh, they want to call on God, but they don't want God or the church to call on them. <laughs> Do I need to say that again? <laughs> Many want to call on God and they want to call on the church in time of need. But when God has a need, they don't want the church and they don't want God to call on them. And so that's where we have to be willing to make adjustments, make changes, and see our part. Let's look here in chapter 16, or verse 16. For because of him, the whole body, the church, and all its various parts, closely joined and firmly knit together by the joints and ligaments with which it supplied, when each part with power adapted to its need is working properly and all its function grows to full maturity, building itself up in love. It's not the preacher's job to build up the body. It's my responsibility to preach the word so that you can build yourself up, so that you can bring yourself and build up the body. I feed you so that you can come and be a supply to the body. Amen. It's not the preacher. It's not the pastor's job to do all the work. And it's not the staff's job to do all the work. Amen. It's our part as we're fitly joined together. You know, I was thinking about this when I was meditating on this the other day. I was thinking when it comes to the body, uh, I don't think we've even, many of us have heard this. You know, we can all go, well, we've heard about being fitly joined together. If you've been in the local church any length of time, especially this one, you've heard this scripture. And if you've been here, you know, more than four years, y'all all remember Henry, right? We all remember Henry. Henry works back in pub, I believe. Uh, is he back in pub? He, still no clothes on. <laughs> Henry is our mannequin that doctor got uh, to talk about the body of Christ, to use as an example as the body of Christ, the local church. You know, Henry was our representation of the local church and how to find your part. And so, but Henry would come out, don't worry, he'd come out clothed. Uh, but I, <laughs> I'll get you something, brother. I'll get you something. We got something I'm sure in lost and found that we can throw on him. Um, so, uh, we still have Henry. I, I didn't think about bringing Henry out tonight, but I was thinking, or this morning, but I was thinking the other day, you know, when part of the body, uh, isn't doing its job, then what happens? Another part has to compensate. Then others have to compensate. Uh, there was a few months ago, I was working out, and I had noticed, you know, my uh, my knees, I've never had problems with my knees, but they were feeling, like, almost strained, you know, you just, something's not right, and I mean, I, I love I love front squats, I'm thinking to myself, man, I, I can't, I'm not doing what I want to do, because I can tell something's not working right, and I'm putting a load, it seemed to be, like, uh, you know, on my quads, the front part of my leg, and uh, I just, it, for maybe a month or so, I'm, I kept feeling my knees being strained, not injured, but just strained. Something isn't functioning right, and then my lower back, you know, was tight all the time. I couldn't figure out what, nobody else's lower back here is tight. What's going on here? So finally, uh, you know, uh, one of the, the coaches there said, get on this thing. It's the the GHG where you do like reverse crunches, you know, I did about four and the entire back part of my leg started cramping and my hamstrings had been your hamstrings, really the backside, your hamstrings are supposed to be the strongest part of your body. You know, that whole, it's supposed to be what really when ladies, you know, it's turned off when you're in heels, it's supposed to be the strongest part of your body. And my hamstrings were not working. They hadn't been working for two months. And so my, the front part of my leg had been pulling the entire load. That's why my lower back was tight. Boy, I did about five of those and I started cramping. My whole back part of my leg started cramping. So every day, go in, I tell my kids, walk on the back of my legs, do some, do some reverse, you know, the, the GHG, get on that thing. So I got those things turned on again. Lo and behold, my lower back wasn't tight anymore, but the front part of my leg wasn't straining war because my, the right part of my body that was supposed to be carrying the load and engage, it wasn't doing its part. So another part became strained, stressed, under pressure, and pulling a load that it wasn't meant to pull. And when the right part of my body began to function properly, everything functioned properly. 
And if Jesus, if God is seeing fit to use the body as an example to us of how we're going to work together, you understand when your part isn't being done, when you aren't taking your place in the local church, there's another part that's going to be put under strain, put under pressure, and carrying a load that they weren't meant to. Because you don't want to take your place. Because you don't want to be activated. What, was, what I was told is your, your hamstrings are not being activated. They're turned off completely. Right. How many people in the body of Christ are turned off completely? How many people in a local church are turned off completely? They come. They're present. My hamstrings showed up to the gym. They were there. They were present. I didn't leave them at home. They weren't not there. They were there, but they weren't doing anything. How many people show up, but they're not doing anything? They're not functioning. And so other parts are tight, doing double duty, making up the difference. What happened was my lower back and my quads were making up the difference. A difference they weren't supposed to be making up. So when I got those things turned on, everything functioned fine. Everything went back to normal. No big deal. You know? And now, okay, let's make some progress. We can move forward. I can, I can move correctly. Listen, God is looking for us to move forward, but he wants us to move forward correctly. And every part has to be bringing its supply, turned on, engaged, not just there. And that's what happens. Many people are just there. They're just present, but they're not turned on. They're not engaged. They're just here. They're not engaged in praise and worship. They're not engaged when we say we need volunteers. They're not turned on when it's time to, to make a sign up for Ministry of Helps. They're not turned on, and they're not engaged. So what happens? The same people begin to take the load and carry the load. You know, wonderful. You know, my quads were getting stronger, but at what expense? It can only go so far. The body, the local church can only go so far when the parts are turned off that aren't supposed to be turned off. And you understand, being present, and I, I wrote this down. I was meditating on this the other day. Just because you're present doesn't mean you're a participator. Just because you're present every Sunday maybe even every Tuesday, it doesn't mean you're a participator in the plan of God. Participators in the plan of God are active. They're doing something. They're involved. I don't want to just be uh, present. I want to be a participator. Don't we know the participators have all the fun? The participators are the ones uh, who get in on the action the participators are the one who, the ones who are in line for the prize. <laughs> you know, if you're a, a kid um, and it's only fair, right, when you're, we had the, the fiesta down there, uh, the fundraiser, and when we did the, um, what do you call those, the pinata. We did the pinatas, and all the kids came because they wanted to participate. You know, they wanted to be present, and we told them, if you want to, be, I get the candy. You're going to have to all line up to participate. There was no, there's no such thing, right, as, well, just let that kid sit over there. They don't have to do anything. And then when the candy falls, you know, what happens? Nobody, nobody likes that. You didn't have to do anything. You just sat there. You didn't participate. You know, the kids that participated were the first ones that got to die when the candy came falling out. When the blessings of God begin to move and the power of God begins to move and needs get met and start being met, the first ones that are going to have their needs met and get to be there as the blessings are being poured out are the participators, not just those who are present. Amen? Find out. I want to encourage you this morning. Find out so that you can be ready and uh, in the right position for when God uh, wants to bring blessing into your life. He's going to have to find you in the place that he needs you in order for the blessing to get to you. Amen. And uh, let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 23.
I want to read something that Jesus said. Matthew 23. And he was talking here to the Pharisees. In verse 11, it says, He who is greatest among you shall be your servant. You understand, Jesus came to this earth not with his own plan, not with his own uh, direction, not with what he wanted to do. He came as a servant to the Father's will. And as a believer, many people are wanting to come, and uh, there's believers who they want to come, they want to be served the word. They want to be served a blessing. They want to be served an impartation. They want to be served by having the preacher prophesy and lay hands. They want to be served uh, and drop their kids off at children so that they can come and be served and be catered to. When we see here that the master himself said, the greatest among you is a servant. He came and served. In his 33 years, he served. He served in his local church as a young man, and he spent those three years of ministry walking and serving the plan of God for his life. And so we have to look at our own lives. Where are we serving? Are we expecting to be served, or are we taking the time to say, I know this, if the master was supposed to be a servant, I'm supposed to be a servant. And... uh, You'll never arrive at being Christ-like until you become a servant like him. Many people say, well, I just want to be like Jesus. Well, what they're really talking about is they want to, you know, learn to be sweet and kind and nice to people around them. Well, I want to be like Jesus, and, you know, I want to shine, you know, let my light shine. And, you know, it sounds all good and sweet until somebody needs to mop the floor. Until somebody needs to serve in children's until somebody needs to work a camera. Suddenly, that doesn't look so much like Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus suffered. He suffered all that hell had to offer. He suffered through it. He suffered through every mistake you made. He suffered through every pain, every symptom. He suffered. But most people can't suffer through serving in a department on one Sunday a month. Because it's too painful on their flesh to sacrifice themselves for somebody else. Can I read you something? I love this statement that uh, Brother Richard Sigmund made in his book. And he said, it is for your joy to make sure that others receive what God has for them. It is for your joy to make sure that others receive what God has for them. The reason most people don't want to serve or don't find their place in the body of Christ or don't want to be a part of something other than what they want is because they don't realize the joy that comes. The devil has robbed them and lied to them uh, about the joy of serving in the local church and becoming a servant, becoming part of something bigger than yourself. Jesus recognized it's bigger than me. At the, he looked, he said, at the joy that was set before him, every time you come, every time uh, uh, those of you who are serving, isn't it wonderful at the end of every service, after you get done working with the children, singing in choir, on TV, the wonderful fellowship that you had, the wonderful joy that you had knowing that you brought somebody else an answer. You helped facilitate bringing somebody else an answer. It is for your joy to make sure that others receive what God has for them. Amen. Amen. Jesus was a servant. Yes, he was the son of God. He was the anointed one. He had miracles. The reason he had miracles is because he understood his life was to serve. Amen. Uh, He also says here, right after that, He said, I saw what seemed to be a gathering place, like a community center. Thousands of women were sitting at tables and benches in park-like setting. In the center of them was a pile of beautiful clothing. They were 
they were sewing but did not have needles and thread in their hands. This is talking about when he was in heaven. They were just putting pieces of cloth together and telling them what to be. The clothes became what the women said. The women were making garments for people who were soon to be there. Notice this. Ministry of helps is still going on in heaven. They're making clothes for others that are going to be coming and arriving. They're preparing for others who are going to be there. So serving doesn't stop once we get to heaven. You want to be in heaven's flow? You got to be on it, be, be with it here on earth. Heaven's flow is a flow of serving, preparing, expectation, and not just for oneself, but for somebody else. A flow of expectation for somebody else. That you understand, I'm serving today. I'm a part of ministry of helps today. I'm doing my part in the body of Christ today so that somebody else can receive their miracle. So that somebody else can have their part uh, of the blessing. Amen. And have their life changed. Amen. Body, the bottom line is, You know, to be a part of the body is to have a part in a function. Every part of the body has a function, correct? If you're not doing anything, you're not functioning. Right? And that's what happens. My hamstrings weren't doing anything. They weren't functioning. And so if you're not doing something in the local church, then you're not functioning the way God made you, the way he intended Amen. And I want to encourage you this morning that if you haven't gotten in on the joy of serving and the blessing that it is on being a part of a local church, not just a present, somebody who's present, but a participator. Today's your day. Today is your day to go, wait a second, I refuse to miss out on what God has for me. I refuse uh, to be the one to let somebody else take the load and put the strain on, you know, I have asked um, a couple of folks in the church uh, to come up. And I, because I, I believe this, I can teach you, but there's nothing better than testimonies of those who have served for so long. And they know that the blessing on their life and what God has done for them is directly because they're serving in a local church. And so I want to start where is, oh, Miss Lori, come up here, Miss Lori. You want to start? Okay. Miss Lori Latimer, I, I love her testimony because Miss Lori came a long time ago. The kids were young. She has three kids. She's a single mom, and she has always, she has her own business. Uh, she has a daycare, and so she is, what, up at 530, 6, 6 o'clock in the morning, uh, works all day with children, um, and comes here, and she has served so faithfully for so many, 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 many years. And so I want her to give her testimony. Miss Lori. Thank you. Um, came to the church almost 14 years now, and I knew I had to get involved, get my children involved in It's just so awesome to be a part of a family. And I left, kind of left my family. They're all in the South. And I wanted to go back to the South and be with, I come from a large family of eight kids. And I wanted to be there, but God arrested me, stay here, stay with your kids, uh, keep them in the church. And so from the day we walked in, I signed up, became a member. We started serving. And um, that's where all my friendships are. Or yeah. here in the church, yeah. fellowship, family, this is my family now. And I know because of that dedication, and I told God, wherever you need me, whatever you need me to do, I will do it. Anytime there's something to be done here, if there's a, if there's a fun or work or whatever it is, I'll, I'll help. Yeah. I'll be a blessing and help out. And I know because I've done that, my three children and my son-in-law, They're all here faithfully, every service. They're here faithfully serving. And there's nothing in the world that can give you that uh, but God. So I thank God for my church and for my pastors. And to be able, it's an honor to serve him and this church. Amen. Amen. The, the, 
testimony of how all three of her children, you know, as a single mom are here, they're faithful, they're serving, uh, they're involved in it, not loosely, their whole family, that's, you know, Four of them, plus their son-in-law, all five of them are fitly joined together. There's not a loose connection. It's a tight connection. Uh, and so now the blessings are going to the next generation. The provision, the opportunities, the jobs, uh, everything is being carried over to the next generation. And so that's the, the blessing that you cannot see maybe at this moment is that when you take your place and you begin to serve, it's going to carry over into more than just your own life. It's going to carry over to the next generation. Amen. Is Brother Kenny, where's Brother Kenny? Is I don't know if he was, a, oh, there you are, Brother Kenny. I didn't know if you were upstairs. Come up here, Brother Kenny. Brother Kenny, he's got a great story, one of our favorites, but whatever uh, you want to share about serving, you and your wife have been so faithful to serve, and now your kids, they're everywhere serving. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Kenny. Yeah, I think one is up in TV, one's on camera three. No tight shots, John. Um, <laughs> so we've been members of this church uh, going on 17, going on 18 years now. Uh, so uh, my culture, I'm Samoan. I know I'm the smallest you'll ever meet. But <laughs> we, uh, we have a heart to serve, you know, just serve and just serve. But what instilled in us in this church was serve with the heart to serve, yeah. not just your work, not just be there, hey, I'm here. You know, uh, uh, Dean, uh, Dean Wilson and I learned during the uh, ladies' conference, uh, <laughs> serving with the heart to serve, we had 25 children in, uh, <laughs> from the age of zero to five. We had a few eight-year-olds that snuck in there, but you really have to have the heart to serve and really, really understand that, hey, you're there being a supply. Uh, yeah. Pastor Morgan brought up Ephesians 4. In the message translation, it talks about, you know, that he keeps us in step with each other. You know, not only with him, but in step with each other and things. And, and we were able to stay in step and do that. But, you know, I was told, actually told last minute to come up. And But, you know, you should never be, you know, weary or whatever. You know, you tell your testimony how good God's been. And God's been such a supply for us. And I know it's, and it's not because of the work. It's because we come with the servant mentality. Uh, I'm in a role now that I never would have imagined I'd be in. Uh, my children are... I mean, look at them. They're beautiful. They're kept. They're honorable. They serve. Um, we got three more waiting to serve for you. And the only restriction is the age. But they're ready. And it's just because we know there's a supply. We know there's a supply. But it's really because we put God first. We put God first and come with the heart to serve. This message here has been such a blessing because it's put me in check. Being a, you know, working in children's. It's kind of, you know what? You do have to come with that mindset. Not just to check the box, but to really be a supply. So it's, it's just awesome. It's been great. Amen. That's good. Yeah, to, to not just check the box. That's when um, you grow weary in well-doing is when it's just a box to be checked. Um, and, and I love what you talked about. You know, he's got kids ready and waiting to serve. I'll never forget. I was telling some of the staff the other day. I'll never forget. Um, it was a Sunday evening. It was my first chance. I had just gotten old enough to serve in the church. And we had Sunday service, Sunday night service. And I, um, I remember it was at our old building. And uh, we had one of the... the there, there was, um, it was old military building, um, military barracks were kind of attached to the old Baptist church. And so we had two stories in one and we were standing under these outside metal stairs. And my mom was prepping me to go serve in children's for the first time. And she started crying. She teared up, um, uh, because it was such a big deal because the heart of serving, you know, the significance of it. Um, I was finally old enough to take my place in the body of Christ, that I was now working a part of Jesus' body the way I couldn't before. And so I, I'll never, ever forget that night when I got to serve for the very first time and the children's, and how big of a deal it was to, to my mom and my dad. Um, and so the heart, he's talking about the heart, not just a box being checked, not just, you know, uh, coming because, well, somebody, or I don't want to look bad, you know. It, it's not about how you look to others. It's about how you look to God. <laughs> I'm more uh, mindful of not just am I serving, but how am I serving? He sees your heart. 
he sees how, you know, he sees how you are here. He sees how you are um, on your job. He sees how you are at home and he sees the insides. He's not just looking for something to be done on the outside. And, uh, and the blessing comes when you're willing and obedient, the word says. And so uh, God is looking to draw those who, who are not just obedient but willing to fulfill his plan. Amen? Uh, Miss Jennifer and Miss Heidi, come on up. I asked them to come up together so they didn't have to be by themselves. <laughs> but, but they have been in the church a very long time, and they've got wonderful um, testimonies when it comes to serving. And I tell you, they have served just about everywhere as well. Uh, like Brother Kenny, go ahead. Whoever. I'm not okay. Um, <laughs> um, I was thinking, I mean, there's just so many things that I could say, but um, I was thinking about the first time that it became real to me, um, the importance of bringing my supply, because um, we came to the church when we were pretty young, and it wasn't an option to serve. My mom signed us up. I don't. I wasn't even born again, and it was like you're in kids. So, um, when I was about 18, I mean, I I did get born again eventually. <laughs> um, about 18-ish, uh, I just started to get squirrely in the mind. That happens sometimes when you're 18. You know, you start to think. I'm missing out or something like that. And, um, but my mom just putting that habit, making the habit that it's a priority to serve. It's just what you do. You, it's not an option. I, and I like having a job. If I don't have a job, I'm the kind that I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself. So I like having a job. So I'm good with that. But so it was, um, back then it was called fresh oil, but it was like camp meeting. And I took the week off um, to serve, you know, because they needed people to serve, and that's just what we did. It wasn't an option. And um, like I said, I was getting off, and um, I served. It was a great week of meetings, I'm sure. I don't remember. But um, when I went home, when I went home, I remember sitting on the back porch, and something had happened, and I was like, it was like the fog lifted. I wasn't squirrely. I saw so clear. Oh my gosh, I was about ready to get off, like off track. And I was like, I went to serve. Pastor didn't call me out. I didn't get a special word. There wasn't anything special that happened. Just being there, I was, I just remember crying, going, Thank you, Lord. And I knew, it, I knew it was connected to working in the Ministry of Helps. And then again, a few years later, 21-ish, I was dating a guy, and he was a great, fine guy, n not a problem, but I knew it wasn't the right one. And again, I took the week off for camp meeting or fresh oils, that's what you do. They need, you know, you just work. Um, and when I went home, again, nothing special happened. Um, I just knew I need to break it off. He's not the right one. And it, again, it was just something that just being there, just showing up, just having the habit of being in the right place for the right for those answers to come. You never know. I mean, there's so many more moments. There's moments that life brings that'll take your breath away, and not in a good way. Um, but being in the place where your answers are, are is like it's priceless. As parents, I mean, can you imagine not having to tell your teenage daughter, "Hey, you're dating the wrong person." God just took care of that, you know. Um, I had another, uh, a, a little precious moment um, in um, about June. Uh, we had a, a situation happen that was pretty tough. And um, it was a Tuesday night. It was after a camp meeting, and um, I came. I, or Tuesday nights I work. I get here as soon as I can, but it's my habit, whether I'm scheduled or not, you know, of course, to come to church, but also to check the coffee shop to make sure everybody showed up and that everything's good. And, um, you know, that night I came. I Maybe I served. I, I think I did. Um, and I was going out to my car. I'm getting in my car, and I hear somebody shouting across the, you know, the parking lot, um, sister, sister. And I'm like, looking around. I'm like, no, nah, it's not for me. So I'm just getting in my car, I'm backing out. And someone pulls up their car behind my car and stops me, and it's Brother Jason. He does not know my name. You know, I'm pretty sure. 
Sister, sister. I, I think he even said sister coffee shop, you know? I'm okay with that. He said, I don't know everything, but I know some of the stuff you're going. He came to encourage me. And all I could think of was, because a week or two prior to that, he had shared his testimony on the Friday night of camp meeting about how he was going to quit and things. And I thought, what if he quit? What if he didn't come tonight to, to play the drums? What if I didn't show up for coffee shop? I would have missed this. And you know what? It didn't come from the pulpit that night. You never know where that supply is coming from. And I, I, it was so precious, and I'll never forget it. And it, it just makes you realize that it's so important that we come and we show up we, to get a supply, but also to bring our supply and just to have that habit. So. You know, when I was asked, when I got the message from Ms. Deneen, you know, there's so many testimonies that you could say of provision or healing that have came just from serving, like Jennifer said. There's a supply in being a supply, and many times you don't realize just being where you're supposed to be, you'll find your provision there. But what I wanted to, um, when I was looking at that, what she'd said of how has it blessed you, and I thought to myself, I kind of settled on the fact that um, serving in Ministry of Helps has given me something valuable to put my time to. Um, when I think about when I think about my work, you know, yes, we all have to work, we have to put those hours in, but all of that really will be burned. It won't matter for anything. I always tell myself, I encourage myself, that when I come here, that's the gold. That's what's going to stand. The work is a word, the, the wood, hay, and stubble that will burn up. And you have to be careful, especially young ones, because when you get into that time, she talked about being 18, when you start um, going towards a career, the world will tell you that that's an important thing, that you need to put your pursuit on that. But it's not money and houses and statuses that are going to heaven with you. It's lives. Lives are going to heaven. That's the only thing that's living this earth. And when you when you serve, um, you get to have your hand in that. No matter, And you don't get to look at a task as anything as being insignificant. I was telling my husband how I was reading with my daughter um, in um, Exodus. And, you know, I've read it and I've seen it, but I never saw it like I did where God's message, message to Pharaoh was not let my people go. It was let my people go that they may serve me. There was an assignment on that freedom. And when I saw that, it blessed me because my whole life I felt like I don't have a purpose. Okay, here's your, here's your divine healing and here's your uh, divine provision. Now go figure it out. And, and, and that's not how it was. It was that he had a purpose for me and all of that all of those resources that he gave you was to be a blessing to the body. And what you find is those resources do more good for you when you're using them to bless others. That's when you start seeing multiplication than when you're just trying to spend them on yourself. And so the more you come and the more you're a blessing, and it wasn't even just that. It was that I told him how, you know, so many times I would be intimidated by the plan of God. It just seemed like this great big mountain. Is there's the plan of God up there, and how am I ever going to get that? But when I saw that scripture, and I, I was just so encouraged that, wow, when I go into the coffee shop, when I come to clean, when I come to serve in the children, I'm serving God. I'm doing my part. When I saw that, it was like looking at this great mountain, and then like, oh, look, there is the staircase. It's called Ministry of Helps. It's step by step, step by step that you get up that mountain into his plan. It's not hard. It's only hard when you try to skip the steps. So it's by faithfulness. He doesn't, he would be unjust to try to put you in a position that he had not prepared you for. And it's in serving in the ministry of helps at these qualities where you're strengthened to where you can stand in those places. I'll never forget when brother Tony told his testimony about um, when he had served with Brother Hagen, but it didn't go, I don't want to mess it up, but it didn't quite go the way he thought it would go. He thought it would just be like, oh, I got a talent, I'm going to sign up, and then I'm going to serve. But it started out of him, uh, but God had him put it on his heart to start cleaning the church or vacuuming or cleaning after the services. And he, he talked about how he was faithful and how um, he would see his family. He could be vacuuming in a room and he could see his family across the street at the shake and stake. And, you know, but he's vacuuming. But he talked about when he later on did get there, how there would be people, and they're like prima donnas on there, 
And, and like the old, old, old age, old saying of their talent got them somewhere their character couldn't keep them. And, be, and because of he went through, he allowed himself to be proved and things to be worked out of him. When God did put him in those places, he didn't forfeit it because he had let, he had took those steps. So ministry of helps, it's valuable. It, for me, there's so much purpose. There's so much fulfillment. There's so much joy. And I'm so thankful that he has given me something easy to do that I'm great. Like, I, I can't mess it up. You know, I, I can't mess up doing dishes. I can't mess up serving it with the children. You know, that's his mercy that I get to have like an adult size reward for a kid size obstacle course. I mean, I cannot mess it up. And so there is joy, there is purpose, and there is blessing in serving. So. Heidi's portion of the service will be available on a single CD set <laughs> in about three weeks. Uh, I I love what Miss Jennifer, um, both of them. Have you noticed everybody has had something, some different element, you know, to bring um, regarding? Do you see how multifaceted serving is? You know, she was saying. Uh, Somebody, listen to this, somebody could find her and encourage her with uh, a major situation she was going in in life because she was faithful to come and serve. Meaning she got her answer because somebody knew her face because she served. How many people leave, they never serve. We may kind of recognize you, but we don't know you. You know, even, even known as Sister Coffee Shop... <laughs> Still, somebody knew her, knew her family, knew her situation, and knew enough where to find her. That's what I was saying. God, if he, if he, you are where he puts you, he'll know where to find you to get your answer to you. And she was saying at those critical crossroad moments in her life, her answer came after weeks of serving, not weeks of soaking and receiving. Her answer came and the revelation and the fog lifted off and, and that thing was put to the run after weeks of serving, not receiving. That's a new concept, you know, for us to let soak in that it will come from serving. Answers can come from serving, not receiving. And then, you know, with Miss Heidi and what she saw, let my people go so that they can serve me. You've been delivered and set free. And uh, the chains were broken. The bondage lifted off of you for a purpose and to serve. And it's, and like she said, it is simple. We, we're going to get you. I, I can share this. Um, there was a woman uh, in my old church. She just went home to be with the Lord. Um, a few weeks ago, and uh, I had served with her in children's for, oh my gosh, I, if I married my husband, um, I would say maybe 12 years, no, uh, 10 years, I had served with her in children's. She served in the same children's department long before I had even been in there. And she just went home to be with the Lord. And I love something. Um, my mom was telling me something Pastor Anderson said. He, he referred to that scripture to live as Christ and to die as gain. What does it mean to really live as Christ? To live as part of his body? To live as a servant as he, you know, as he lived? And, and he said to live as Christ and to die as gain. He said because she lived as Christ, she now gained. That's what Miss Heidi was saying. I serve and I'm going to receive this reward oh, simply because I was doing what he uh, has anointed me to do. He's called me to do. He's blessed me. He's enabled me. He did all the hard work. I just have to make the effort to be here, be present, and be willing. Amen. And you'll receive the reward the same as Christ, the same as Jesus. Amen. Uh, I've got one more couple, Brother Jeff and Miss Monica. And I, you know, I picked uh, some of the reason I, these are the ones that came to my heart this week. So many of us have testimonies, but these were the ones that immediately came up. And I, I, I know for some, you know, Miss Lori being a single mom, Miss Jennifer has her own business and her own family. Miss Heidi is a professional. She's been through, uh, done the Bible school. She serves every Friday. Um, they've, they've all been department heads. Uh, Brother Kenny, 
as his large family. He's he at many times he was not only working but also in the Navy, um, and then coming and being helping uh, be a department head assistant. So all of these, it's not that they get to stay home every day and have all this free time. So I like their testimonies because there's never been an excuse for why they can't. These folks could have every excuse in the world for why they can't come in the natural, but they've never let it hinder them from uh, taking their place in the body of Christ. What is free time? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have that. So, for those of you who don't know us, we've been here for over 16 years. We were engaged or dating. I don't know. Dating. One of those. Dating. Not married. <laughs> so, but from the very beginning, we were sold out to what God had for us here. And I started in the infant nursery. Was I pregnant or did I have her already? I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> not now. So, um, but the blessings started then for us personally and the things that I learned. Miss Deneen taught me the best way to change a diaper. Yeah. <laughs> we did that for 10 years every day. Change a diaper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. Wow. She's like, I would never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me throw in there. We always wanted five. Praise God. We had the girl at the beginning and three crazy wild boys and then the girl at the end. So that was exactly what we wanted. <laughs> But I learned so much from being in those different departments. And as we progressed and as I grew as a mom, um, I've learned spiritual and practical things in Ministry of Helps. The diaper changing, so practical. But many people do it wrong. <laughs> you don't have to talk about that. <laughs> and then the spiritual side of learning how to minister over my babies. Because in the infant nursery, we have a list. We have scriptures. We know what we're going to say over our babies. Um, and you see the immediate anointing on that when you minister over your babies. Then moving into toddlers and learning how to take different scriptures and word and make things fun for them and teach them lessons. Um, that was a really good thing. But I have to say that the standard of excellence that pastor has always had for so many years, you actually see that standard in every ministry of helps. So when you're a part of a ministry of help, you learn that standard more so than just sitting in a chair. <laughs> so that standard of excellence shows in how you present yourself in the world. And it makes clients want to work with you. And it helps increase your business because there are other people who have no standard. They're sloppy. They go out and run a business as though... Who cares how they look when they go or how they present their work? So the standard of excellence has really made a big difference for us in business um, and in how we run our homes, yeah. for sure. And then it was really cute when Cassidy became big enough to serve. <laughs> she was so eager to be able to serve with the children's department, um, not because I told her to, <laughs> right? So now we'll be able to see all of our kids grow into that. But to have a routine to have a standard, to be able to have a discipline about how you run things. That's exactly what Ministry of Helps does for us. And we take every piece of that into our daily lives, into our business lives, into our home lives. And honestly, the standards of the world just seem to be declining yeah. daily. And we really do stand out. We are an example. We're not a perfect example, but we are an example because we're constantly striving for what excellence would do, not for what the world would do. That's right. So we're very grateful. It's an honor to serve. It's not, I mean, you really don't get to know people until you serve. <laughs> so it doesn't feel like a family if you walk in and you hear the sermon and you walk out. You learn about who the people are. You learn about their testimonies, how their lives have changed, the anointings in their own lives, and the things that have happened to bless them. And then you can even use your testimony, their testimony, when you're talking to other people in the world. So that's all I have. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So when, when I was asked, or when we were asked to, to go ahead and give a testimony, what kind of uh, popped up in my spirit was um, some will do all, and while really all should do some, 
right? So when she touched on that. So that kind of went off in me, and it was really funny <laughs> when you're talking about your workout story, because I have this elbow right here that's, I can't even do a pull up right now. And I was talking to the same coach, you know, and she was saying that it has to do with your shoulder. Yeah. 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 So my shoulder, because of my shoulder um, not doing what it needs to do, the elbow took all of the brunt. So now I'm kind of out for a little while from working that, from doing a bunch of rope climbs. So it was kind of funny that it's true that that one, if, if one is doing all of the work, yeah. right? You know, you're gonna have one that's gonna be able to sit back and kind of relax. So we have five kids, and as many of you know, and uh, you know, the trash comes once a week, right? <laughs> so when trash comes, it's pretty simple. If one had to do trash every week, it'd be kind of a bummer for that one person, right? So how I sell it is you can do trash once a month yeah. by rotating. Right. Yeah. So if one serves all the time, if one serves all the time, yeah. then it gets kind of heavy. Yeah. But if everybody serves some of the time, yeah. everybody serves some of the time, yeah. then it becomes a lot more pleasing, yeah. we get the job done, the vision comes to pass, the church grows, yeah. people aren't complaining, people aren't <laughs> looking like they've been waiting on a pickle for their life, they've been smiling and everybody's happy. The, one thing great about the vision that Pastor um, had shared with us, uh, just from the pulpit, is that this, the, this is the church's vision. It's not my vision, no. right? I'm, I'm just a part of that vision. I, I'm here to, you know, bring my supply to the vision. So when we should all look at it and what, what we have done, because our household is our vision. Yeah. Yeah. They are contributing to our vision. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So therefore, if they don't complete and contribute to the vision, then the household isn't going to be unified. Right. We're not going to go forward. And it goes for our company, too, our companies that we have. We have a couple companies. And so what Pastor had um, preached about many times is that, and what we got from Ministry of Helps, because quite frankly, I never was taught Ministry of Helps growing up. You know, it was, it was kind of one of those things where I come in, look at the clock, what are we going to have for lunch, and then go home, you know, go to lunch. And so, and I'm a work in progress. I'm still learning how to be uh, available and to to give and to serve um, with a with a good spirit. So I'm I'm always everybody's always learning and adapting, right? So uh, what it's done is taught us in our businesses to contribute to the vision is to teach people. Yeah. You got to be taught how to serve. I mean, you really do. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, most people are very selfish yeah. 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 by nature. So you have to be taught when you're in the in the in the church to be able to be to be a servant. So when we taught our kids, and then we're in a business ownership. We're teaching those people yeah. to be a servant for the vision so the company can grow and be accomplish what it needs to do. So bottom line is, is that's kind of what was on my heart. It was that, that, you know, all do, I mean, some do all, all do some. And that if everybody contributes to the vision, no matter how small, how big, how young, how old, you know, big, little, whatever it happens to be, if you serve in some capacity, maybe it's not even a ministry of helps that's here. Maybe it's something you're really just good at yeah. Yeah. That, that you can bring to the church, whether it be, I don't know, whatever it happens to be. So it's just some sort of supply that you give to the local body to make this vision. Because what she was saying was interesting about what, what um, uh, Brother Copeland was saying was, if it really is going to happen, we've got to, you know, you got your word, what are you going to do with it? That's what he said, right? right? So it's kind of like we got the word. What are we gonna do with it? Yeah. So. Good. 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 so, 
I, they, they said what I was hoping they would say, because uh, I didn't tell anybody what to say, but again, you see all the different elements, and I love that they brought into, because they have different businesses, multiple companies, and they've taken what they learned in the church and brought it in, not what, this is what people want to do. Well, I'm a professional, and I've accomplished this, and I've accomplished that, and I've done this, and I've done that, and they want to come in the church and run something and be somebody and, you know, be a boss as they are, and they're saying, look, we came in the church and we learned our standard. We learned how to operate. We we've learned so much and God met us where we were at. And now we're thriving because of the things we learned in the church. And uh, that's the divine order. That's the way God ordained it to be. And because the, they have multiple businesses because they got the order, right? You know, you want to be prosperous, you want to have good success, get the order right, and God can funnel uh, every joint, supplieth every member uh, working together. You can have all the health, you can have all the benefits uh, of the, the nutrients that flow through the body. As you begin to hook up and get that order right, God can get you everything you need. He can supply you with everything you need. And that was their testimony. I came and we got everything we need, uh, and now this is is where we're at. Our kids are thriving. Our businesses are thriving. Um, and so I would encourage you today uh, that if you are not serving, don't miss out. It would be unfair uh, for me to only expect um, as a pastor, those who know about serving and those who know about ministry of helps, uh, to expect them to take all the load and to do it all and to never teach um, the benefits and the blessings of being a part. You heard many of them say, I got to know people as I served and I, I became a part as I served. Um, I, I got a blessing as I served. I know that my family is where it is because I serve. Um, and we could go down the line here with so many that have so many similar testimonies. Uh, but I would encourage you today, if you are not serving, you're not a part, you're not giving um, any of your time um, and your effort towards the local church, you just come and you receive. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you're present and you know that this place brings answers. But I would encourage you, and if I can let these testimonies encourage you to go further and to reach for more and to become um, a part of the body of Christ, not just uh, present. And um, while I'm here, uh, and like Brother Jeff said, and kind of thinking about what you're going to do later on, um, the blessing lies in obedience, and it comes with those who are serving as Jesus served. We are to become Christ-like, and the way you become Christ-like is take your place in his body. Amen. Amen. We'll go ahead and stand with me this morning. If you are in a Arrested. Um, they let me know that out on the information, just pass them out down the rows. Go ahead and grab those. Um, the ushers, are, I believe they're on the information center. Yeah, and if you are serving, you either got a pat on the back or an adjustment in your thinking. <laughs> And if I can encourage you, those of you who are serving, you know, I know with different situations, different work schedules, but if I could encourage you, um, be workable. I can only work the second Tuesday of every month with my husband and I, you know, you have all these special needs and requests, you know, a lot of folks, you know, can I congregation, can I say this? We are at, I know a lot of people left to go to their post. I wish they would have stayed in here. Uh, we are uh, at about 30% of the congregation not serving, and that is minus the children. I eliminated everybody who cannot serve because of age. That's the lowest we've ever been. The lowest. We're usually up between 85 and 90 percent. Uh, we are now at about 70 percent of this congregation are serving. That's the lowest we've been. That's why I thought it's good to bring these to, these things to you and before you. And I would say about 15 to 20 of those have very special requests that every month Miss Deneen has to cater to their special requests. Again, we're not against if, if you've got your, you know, like we've had men in the military, you know, they, they've got to be out certain weeks. We understand that. 
totally get that. But I'm talking just because you want to be particular in control. You, yeah, it's it's convenient for you. Um, I would ask you just re-examine that. Uh, you know, reevaluate that um, because uh, God is not asking something from you that you can't give, and you're not anointed to give, and He's not got a blessing tied to that. So we're at the lowest amount of serving that we've ever had. Uh, ushers, did we pass those down? the rose. Thank you, Brother Ken. Thank you, Brother Bob. Um, so anyway, turn to somebody before you're dismissed. Ladies, don't forget about the baby shower. Uh, turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, I'm going to be faithful to be a blessing. And we'll see you Tuesday night.